Good morning and welcome to Morning Psalms and Prayer. A happy Christmas Eve to you. It's December 24th and we are in Psalm 134. We are also still in lifting up our hearts. Today our prayer is entitled, Examine Ourselves. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, since our minds have so many hidden recesses, that nothing is more difficult than thoroughly to purge them from all fiction and lying. Grant that we may honestly examine ourselves, and may you so shine upon us with the light of your Holy Spirit, that we would truly acknowledge our hidden faults and put them far away from us, that you may be our only God. And may we offer you pure and spotless worship, and meanwhile may we conduct ourselves in the world with a pure conscience. And may each of us be so occupied in our duties as to consult our brother's advantage as well as our own, and at length be made partakers of that true glory you have prepared for us in heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, we are in a short song of ascent today. It is Psalm 134. As I said earlier, there are just three verses. Hear the word of the Lord. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who made heaven and earth. And so we have arrived at the last song of ascent. Have you ever noticed those as you've read in the Psalter? Have you ever noticed these songs of ascent, this series of psalms that sort of have a progression to them? Maybe you don't read the little the little headline here that says a song of ascent. Maybe you're like me, you just jump to the words. You're you're too busy to look at look at that uh, description of the psalm and you get to it. I'll never forget the first time I really noticed that there was a series of this. I was actually listening to the Psalms in uh, the ESV Bible app, and the person reading these Psalms was would say, Psalm 134, a song of ascent. And I kept on saying it over and over, and I'm like, how did I miss this before? Well, it's because I was too busy getting to the meat of the passage, but these are important, and this is clearly the conclusion, not just because it's the last one, but because we see here in this passage a I, an idea of conclusion, because what we have, it seems like it is a, it is a statement by one group and then a statement by another. Verses one and two seem to be a statement by the people who have come to Jerusalem, to the priests, and then verse three seems like the priests making a statement back to the people. Let's take a look at it here. It says, come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. Now you and I are servants of the Lord. All people who are God's people are servants, but this is talking about something specific. It's those who stand by night in the house of the Lord. This would be the people, the priests, who serve in the temple. And so they are to continue to bless the Lord. They are to lift up their hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. This continual worship must not end. Even though the people are leaving Jerusalem, the people speaking this are leaving Jerusalem, the worship of God must continue because he is worthy. And then the priests respond, verse 3, May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who made heaven and earth. In other words, as you leave, may God continue to bless you. And he is capable of doing it because he's not just the God of this one town. He's not the God of just this one temple. He is the God who made heaven and earth and his, his blessing can go out from this place. And so you continue to worship God. You continue to trust in him until you return for the next festival or for the next time you come to Jerusalem. May God continue to bless you. It doesn't just happen here. And so we think about this, and it's important that we remember that we continually worship God. The weekly worship of God's people in the church is absolutely important. It's important that we're here to worship God, to hear the gospel, and to be sent out with blessing. But we also have to remember that in each and every moment, we can worship God. That we can remember the blessings that he's given us. And we can say, Lord, thank you so much for all that you have done for me. And so as we think about this psalm, as we actually think about how we're going to live in light of these songs of ascent, may we remember the sojourning of these people. They had this progression of psalms that they would have sang, and they would come to the temple, and, and that was the, the, the pinnacle of what they would do in their uh, religiosity at that time. It was important. God was there. God was blessing them. 
But then they would leave and they'd come and go. But they had this place that they would go. And even though it seems as though the priests here are saying, hey, God is everywhere. He's over everything. He's the one who made heaven and earth. He can bless you anywhere. There was always this sense that they needed to come to the temple. But for us, we have the fulfillment of all of this in the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have a temple anymore because Christ fulfilled it. And so we can remember that God in Christ has blessed us so infinitely. He will continue to be over our lives. We, he will continue to be blessing us. And so we can humbly come before him each and every day, just as the priests are being admonished by the people here to continue to worship God all the time. May we continue to worship God at all times, trusting that he has torn down the walls that were present where there was a temple and there were, were sacrifices. He's torn down those walls. In Christ, we have the fulfillment of all of that. And so we can continually worship God, trusting in him and his sovereign grace and mercy in our lives. Let us go to prayer. Father in heaven, we are your servants and we come before you and bless your holy name. We lift our hands to the holy place and trust that you are at work in us today, for you are sovereign and you are the Lord of heaven and earth. From the rising of the sun to the setting, may your holy name be praised. On this Christmas Eve, we lift up your church to you. We pray that you would provide safety to those who are attending worship services that commemorate the Lord's birth today and tomorrow. Grant them traveling mercies and keep them safe as they worship. May our worship be pleasing to you, and we pray that we would keep our focus on Christ and what his incarnation means for us. For we have a Savior who took on our very own flesh and died for our sins. Help us to relish in that truth this Christmas season. And as we begin this day, we ask that you would strengthen our trust in you. Many options will be before us today, but we ask that through your word and spirit, we would turn to you. Build us up in faithfulness, that we might be a people that is holy and set apart before you. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, I hope you have a great Christmas Eve and a great Christmas day. There will not be a morning Psalms and prayer tomorrow as it is Christmas Day, but we'll be back on Monday. Have a great holiday and take care.